Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a 2021 study has shown that elevated levels of lipids called ceramides could increase the chances of death from cardiovascular disease by 10 times and that an existing drug normally used for the control of type 2 diabetes and obesity can have mitigating effects. That's enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this 2021 study has got to offer. This is a review of a study I read by the Karolinska Institute that showed elevated levels of lipids known as ceramides can be associated with a tenfold higher risk of death from cardiovascular disease. There's links in the description below to the studies and papers I used to put this presentation together. Approximately 16% of the Swedish population suffers from obesity. That's a BMI of over 30. Obesity is one of the greatest risk factors for cardiovascular diseases such as myocardial infarction and stroke. The World Health Organization has estimated that cardiovascular diseases are the main cause of mortality worldwide, resulting in more than 17 million deaths a year. Principal investigator in the Department of Medical Biochemistry and Biophysics at the Karolinska Institute, Craig Wheelock said, understanding the link between obesity and cardiovascular diseases is important and can lead the way to the development of new therapies. Fat has traditionally been seen as a simple storage tissue, but in recent years, it has been shown to be a biochemical laboratory capable of producing signaling molecules that control potent biological functions. Understanding how adipocytes produce and release these molecules opens the possibility of reprogramming them with the aim of preventing future incidences of cardiovascular disease. Using a mass spectrometer, the Wheelock Laboratory was able to measure levels of multiple metabolites secreted by two kinds of human fat tissue. The fat that accumulated around the heart in obese individuals secreted different metabolites relative to subcutaneous fat. In obese individuals, the fat that surrounds the heart secreted higher levels of ceramides. In particular, elevated levels of a specific lipid variant called C160 ceramide were observed. This is based on palmitic acid, which is a saturated fat consisting of 16 carbon atoms. The researchers were able to show that ceramides secreted from adipose tissue damaged human blood vessels by initiating a process called oxidative stress, which can eventually lead to heart attacks and to stroke. Assistant Professor Craig Wheelock stated, these results show emphatically that fat is not just energy storage tissue, but also a source of important bioactive molecules that can have powerful immunomodulatory functions. In addition, all tissue is not equal, and the type of fat is clearly important in determining the observed biological function. To understand the significance of the cardiovascular effects of the ceramides, the researchers studied 633 patients with atherosclerosis. They were monitored for more than five years. They found that elevated levels of both C160 ceramide and its glycosylated variant could be linked to a tenfold increase in the risk of fatal cardiovascular disease, even after controlling for other risk factors, including age and weight. Co-author Antonio Checker, the researcher who conducted the analysis, said, the results suggest it could be worth incorporating the measurements of different kinds of sphingolipids, both in their original form as well as in the glycosylated variants, to better gauge the risk of the occurrence of fatal cardiovascular events. The results also gave the researchers reason to examine if high ceramide levels in the blood can be effectively reduced. In the last part of the study, 32 volunteers were placed on a low calorie diet for eight weeks before being split into two groups. 
One group received a placebo and one group received a GLP-1 analog drug that is approved for the treatment of obesity and type 2 diabetes. Both groups continued the low calorie diet for another 44 weeks. One year after the study, ceramide levels in the blood had increased significantly in the control group, while levels remained stable in the group taking the GLP-1 analog drug. The principal investigator, Craig Wheelock, said, the most important findings are that we add to the evidence that there is a direct correlation between the risk of fatal cardiovascular disease and ceramide levels in the blood, and that this can be treated with an existing medication. The study was led and coordinated by Professor Antoniades. He said, we reveal for the first time the role that ceramides play as messengers that bring about the damaging effect on blood vessels that we see in obesity. This presents unique opportunities for the improved diagnosis and treatment of cardiovascular disease. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I made some notes. Uh, Victosia, which is the drug that was used during the study, as we know, is used for treating type 2 diabetes, obesity and chronic weight management. With regard to type 2 diabetes, metformin is actually preferred as an agent over Victosia. That said, after a cursory check, it appears as though metformin also contains the ceramide controlling properties that the drug used during the trial also possesses. So maybe another reason to take metformin as a preventative as opposed to waiting until you're diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.